Hey guys, hi, welcome back once again. My name is Vaishali and today I'd like to talk about trauma. Now trauma originally means wounding, a wounding that happens both on physiological as well as psychological levels. A wound that is physically explicitly visible and a wound that is invisible. And these are the implicit invisible wounds that rarely get addressed. And they rarely get addressed because they are intangible, because they are not tangibly, objectively, explicitly visible. And unlike the physical tangible wound which gets addressed, which even gets addressing, these invisible, intangible, implicit wounds don't get addressed, don't get addressing. Now when we talk of these non-physiological, psychological wounds, the psychological wounds in their original state, in their root meaning, are the woundings to our soul. They are the wounds that have a deep impact on the very core of our beings. Because the root word or the root for the word psyche is soul. So these traumas or these wounds that are hidden, that are not tangible, that we fail to address, are the wounds on our soul. And they start happening so early in life, they are so deep-rooted, they are so intangible, they are so invisible and they are so implicit that many of us barely get to the root of them and thereby barely get to reconnect with our own soul, with our own inner core. Now, if you look into the movie Dear Zindagi or Bhul Bhulaya One for that matter, now through these movies, we get to see the example of two kids who experienced trauma in similar way but it manifested itself in two different ways. These were the kids who were left by their parents in the caretaking of their grandparents because they wanted to pursue their own ambitions, because they wanted to pursue their own lives quite naturally, not just for themselves but even for the kids that they got into the world. Now, these were not malicious parents. These were not parents who deliberately wanted to hurt their kids, who deliberately wanted to abandon their kids. These were not ill-intentioned parents or grown-ups. And yet that helpless, dependent child gets the message that they are being abandoned by their own parents. And quite naturally, during those foundation formative years, the kids don't understand the logics of it, the rationality of it, the meaning, the interpretation or the narrative that the kid makes of it, that the growing soul, that the growing child makes of it, is that I am not good enough to be loved, that I am not worthy of being loved, that there is something wrong with me for my own caretakers to abandon me, to leave me, which kind of then begins to form and inform the concepts about self-esteem, about self-worth, about trust, about honesty, about support system, about dependability, about reliability, about self-confidence, about self-love and many more such things that we kind of associate with ourselves. And when these wounds happen in the early formative years, these are called as attachment wounds. Now, in both of these movies, the growing up kids once again experience the trauma of abandonment, the trauma of being pulled away from the place where they felt belonged, where they felt loved and nurtured, where they felt seen, heard and understood. When they were once again removed or rather torn away from their grandparents because the parent found it convenient to do so, at least in the eyes of that child. And in one of the cases where the parent felt ashamed of their child's report card, of their child's result, they were embarrassed by that little child. So an urgent immediate action was taken to remove this child to tear away this child from their grandparents. At least that's what the child makes of it. At least that's what the growing kid makes of it. And in a way, during those formative years, the child gets the message that it's a cause of the parents' embarrassment, that it's the cause of parents' shame. 
And quite naturally, if we reconnect the entire thing, anything that we are ashamed of, anything that we feel embarrassed about, anything that we are shameful about, we don't want to address it and keep it within ourselves. We either want to neglect it or to avoid it or to hide it someplace else. And the child gets the message that of course I'm unwanted, of course I'm undesired, of course I'm unloved because I'm a shameful thing that my parents are ashamed about. Of course they don't want to attend to me, of course they don't want to be present with me because I'm a thing that's to be ashamed about, that's to be embarrassed about. And since as kids, many a time since these things don't get addressed, we kind of fail to address it within our own selves. We kind of push it to the back burners. We kind of bury it under the soil. Or we try to push it aside exactly like the way we were pushed aside by our caretakers. And all of this is not deliberately done. All of this is not consciously done, but it's happening at a very subconscious level. And also since as kids, Many of our caretakers did not know how to regulate themselves, did not know how to help us regulate our own emotions, our own stories, the pain of our stories, the pain of the narrative or the meaning that we make for ourselves given those experiences. As grown-ups, many a times we do not know how to manage and regulate our own emotional states, our own woundings. Because they are so uncomfortable, we try to push them away. We try to push them aside. We try to do everything possible not to address them. And when we don't address them, we don't do their dressing like we would do for a physical wound. And just like a tree that takes birth from a seed which is buried deep inside the soil which we can't see, our traumas, our wounds that are so deeply embedded in almost all of us, start to grow, start to branch out, start to fruit, exactly as the tree would grow. And since we are biopsychosocial creatures, if these wounds, they are not addressed, if they are not dressed, we pass it around. Not deliberately, not consciously, not purposefully, but unintentionally, unmindfully, neglectfully, we still pass them around. We invariably kind of repeat what we had once experienced. And as they say, nothing changes if nothing changes. And change can only happen if we reflect, if we introspect to become aware of our own stories, of our own histories that made us who we are. To then not only begin the journey of healing ourselves so that we don't hurt others, so that we don't keep hurting ourselves, but also to bring about the changes that we wish to bring in ourselves and in our lives. Let's take the time out to reflect and to introspect and I will see you once again the next week. Till then, stay tuned in. And guys, if you do like the contextual content of these videos, please do like, share and subscribe.